What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Redstone Fundamentals. In this episode, we are going to talk about the Observer uh, and how to craft it and how to use it. And hopefully, I can teach you at least one thing in this episode. If you do end up learning something in this episode, feel free to leave it down in the comments. If I have missed something, which I likely have, throw that down in the comments as well. And let's use this as a teaching Eno opportunity. All right, guys, let's get into it. All right, so first things first, how to make an observer. You need six cobblestone, <clears throat> two redstone dust, and one nether quartz laid out just like this, and this will give you one observer. Uh, the only way to obtain an observer is to craft one. They do not spawn uh, in the world, nor can you trade villagers for one. When placing an observer, uh, the redstone signal side is facing the player, and the observing side is facing away from the player. On the top and bottom of the observer is an arrow indicating the direction in which the redstone signal will be traveling. The observer can be placed in any orientation the player wants as long as they are facing away from the block when they place it to get the direction that they want. So the way that observers work is the observer monitors the block space immediately in front of the observer. So not this block down here, but the block space right above it. So if we change the state of that block space, so for example, if we place a block or destroy a block, it will detect that change. It will also detect that change if we use a piston to push a block in front of it or use a piston to remove a block from in front of it. It will also detect the, uh, the change in that block state and send that signal. But before I get into what other things it can detect, I wanted to talk about what it can't detect. So it won't observe the opening of chests, as you can see. It also will not observe the change in inventory inside of a chest. So if we were to remove this or place it back in, there is no redstone signal being sent. The same thing goes for hoppers as well. It will not send a redstone signal if the hopper, uh, if inventory in the hopper changes. So that is another way that it does not activate. The observer will also not send a redstone signal when you activate a beacon or deactivate a beacon. Same goes for when you activate or uh, power a dragon head. Uh, there is no pulse being sent by the observer. And one more thing that it does not detect, and that is the placement of item frames. So as you'll notice, the lamp will not turn on when I place the item frame or an item in the item frame or rotate the item in the item frame. Moving on to the things that it can detect. So an observer can detect if a fire is started or put out in front of it. Now I mentioned that it can it doesn't detect if a chest is opened or closed, but it does detect if a shulker box is opened or closed. And you'll notice that it will actually send out double pulses on both the opening and the closing. It also detects the same with barrels, except it doesn't do the double on the opening or closing. With hoppers, like we mentioned earlier, it does not detect the changes in inventory inside the hopper. However, if you lock or unlock a hopper, it will detect that. It will also detect changes to farmland. So in this case, this is just a regular dirt block. If we were to change it to farmland, it will detect. It will also detect if this farmland returns to a normal glass block and it also detects changes in farmland's hydration level. It will also detect if a dispenser or dropper is activated. This one's an interesting one. I discovered it will also detect when a redstone ore block is activated and deactivated. An observer will also send a redstone signal when the grass spreads onto the block it is monitoring. 
Observers will also detect the growth of plants such as bamboo. The observer will also detect and send a signal when you either remove or place in a potion in the brewing stand. Unlike chests and uh, hoppers where it doesn't actually detect inventory or anything like that, it can though detect if you remove or plant uh, plants inside of flower pots. It can also detect not the signal necessarily from a um, repeater, which obviously it does detect that. It can also detect though changes to the repeater's uh, status. So the ticks it can detect but also if you were to lock the repeater, it will also detect. The observer can also detect changes in the shapes of iron bars. Uh, this also includes walls, fences, glass panes, stairs, tripwire, redstone, vines, melon stems, or pumpkin stems. It can also detect uh, when you play notes on a note block. It also detects if a door is opened or closed. It can also detect if a red uh, tripwire is tripped, even if the tripwire itself isn't connected to tripwire hook. So I have it connected on one side just to show you that there, it is a tripwire hook but it's also not fully connected over here, uh, but you can still trip the tripwire and it will still send that signal. In fact, if I break both tripwire hooks and walk through the tripwire, it will still send that signal. All right, one thing I wanted to show you was uh, a different way that you can use observers in a redstone contraption. And the one that I wanted to talk about right now was a, a replacement for the torch tower. Now the torch tower is great, it's good, it's compact, it's in a one by one area. So it is a very efficient way to carry a redstone signal up if you needed to carry it up over multiple levels. Um, if you haven't seen the my redstone torch video, feel free to check it out. I'll throw a card up in the top right corner right here. Uh, and that will explain why this works and how each torch does what it does. But anyways, there are some downsides to the torch tower. One of the major downsides is delay. There is a delay with each torch. It's very minimal, but there is a delay. The second major downside to a torch tower is the potential to lag in a server or um, in a world. And the reasoning for that is because these torches, when they are on, they do emit some light. Now, when I use torch towers, I generally don't want to look at them. So I hide them inside of a wall so that I don't have to see them. But the problem with that is if you don't light up the area where these are, every time you activate or deactivate or change the status of these torches, the game has to do some lighting updates and that can cause lag, especially if you're on a server with a bunch of other people. So if you want to do the same thing, carry redstone signal up, but have the, you know, the, the rest of the people on your server continue to love you, then what you would want to do is replace your torch tower with this observer tower. Now, the way that this observer tower works is the observer at the bottom is monitoring the state of the redstone uh, dust right beneath it. Now this, any change to this redstone state, whether it turns on, turns off, or the amount of power in this redstone dust right here changes. So right now we can take a look, we can actually calculate what the strength is. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine. So this has a strength of nine. If it was to change to eight or 10, that change in redstone power is enough to trigger the observer. So what ends up happening is once the observer detects any change in this redstone, it sends that signal into the block here, which powers or in other words, locks this hopper. And as I mentioned before, observers can detect when a hopper is locked or unlocked. So once this uh, hopper becomes locked, this observer here detects that, sends a pulse into the next block, which does the same thing to the next hopper, so on and so forth, as high as you wanna go, 
Um, and the nice thing, again, for those two downsides on the torch tower, the lag and the delay are eliminated with this tower. Now I've made, um, hopefully I've made these tall enough that you may notice a slight delay between the two towers. This one should be faster than this one. Now, if you were to build a much taller tower, you would notice a much bigger difference in the time, uh, in the reaction that this one has to the redstone changing. So I'm going to flick this lever and you'll see that both of these will change. They're both going to have uh, the redstone change and you're going to see that this one will act first. So for those two downsides on this guy, the torch tower, this does eliminate the lag because there's no torches, there's no lighting updates to happen and it is much faster. So if you are working on a redstone contraption that needs, you know, faster response, it, you know, delays can mess up in the way that certain contraptions work. This is the tower that you want to go with. Another thing you can use observers for, if you face observers into each other, uh, it will form a clock, which, I mean, you can pull out of both sides, obviously, because each side is uh, sending out a redstone signal. But it is one very simple, small, compact way of creating a clock. If an observer is stationary, it doesn't only observe the block in front of it. It also detects if the observer itself was moved. If the observer was moved, then it will send a signal out. So that is one way to use something like uh, this, where we want to turn on this lamp permanently. But the issue with observers is they don't send out a steady signal. They send out a pulse. So what we can do in this case is we can send uh, a pulse from this observer because we move it with this piston, which the pulse will power this uh, piston here, which will push the, red, the redstone block, excuse me, underneath the lamp, powering the lamp. Now I'll show you what this looks like. We have a button on the front, which will temporarily power the piston, which means that this will only move for a short period of time and then it will move back to its original position. And because the pulse from the uh, observer was short, this piston extended, but because the power was so short, it actually um, retracted quick enough that it didn't pull this block back. Uh, that's one thing with sticky pistons, that if you can extend and retract a sticky piston quick enough, then it acts the same as a normal piston. The reason we don't want a normal regular piston in this case is because we do want this sticky piston to be able to now, if we want this lamp turned off, to retract the redstone block back, which is what will happen when we power this again. All right, guys, but that is it for the episode today. Again, guys, if I forgot anything, which I likely did, please feel free to leave that down in the comments. Uh, if you learned something, let me know what that was. Also down in the comments, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you liked the episode, smash that like button uh, and let me know what you loved about it down in the comments. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next episode.